Good morning, Interweb. World Builders Log 21. Today is the day we've all been waiting for. It is time to do a world reveal. So I think the best way of doing this is to just play the simulation in full, uninterrupted, and then we'll do a blow by blow detailed breakdown of what's going on throughout the history of this planet. So let's get started. And there we go. How cool is that? Once again, massive, massive thanks to World Building Pasta for putting this together for me. I gave him a pretty strict brief on what I needed this world to do. We'll talk about it later. And he executed it just beautifully. So pleased with this. Everyone go check him out. Links in the description. So let's do the blow by blow. Back to the start of the simulation. So although the simulation begins at 2000 million years ago, the modern world is at 1150. So it's an 850 year simulation. 850 million years ago, there was a supercontinent. It looked like this. The general thing to be aware of is that uh, major rifting events usually cause the planet to warm and sea levels to rise. Whereas major collisional events usually cause the planet to cool and sea levels to fall. So prior to this point, we'd expect the planet to be fairly cold. And as soon as this really substantial rifting event occurs, we'd expect the planet to generally warm over time. Total surface area of the supercontinent is about 26%, which is great because through the accumulation of island arcs, etc., throughout the simulation, we'll hopefully get close to our 29, 30% that we're aiming for. We'd also expect there to be large igneous provinces associated with this rift, but again, they happen so far in the past that they have basically no relevance to modern geography, so they're not marked in. So as we scroll forward, we get that initial rift. And 50 million years later, we get a secondary rift, splitting our supercontinent into three chunks. This fella is going to go south, this fella is going to go east, and this fella is going to go west. And that motion basically just continues until we get to 1860. And at 1860, we get our first large igneous province of note. It's going to be a precursor to another rifting event. It's on the small side, so it may or may not lead to a substantial extinction. It might also cause a bit of a cold snap, perhaps forming glaciers over the southern mountain ranges here. But once this rift opens up, we'd expect the cold snap to subside and we'll go back to warming again. So at 1850, we see that the rift has opened up. And the reason why it's opened up is that this subduction zone here along the southern continent is putting pressure on this side of the eastern continent to like break off. And if we switch to orthographic view, we can see that better. So all of this section here is like sucking stuff in and it's putting pressure on this. So the rift opens and then eventually this chap is going to be sent off this way. At 1800, we can kind of see the beginning stages of the next supercontinent forming. This chap here is going to smash into him. This chap here is going to smash into him. And then those two bits are going to come together. To help achieve that, a subduction zone is opened here, which is going to suck in everything to the north here, accreting land, building mountains. Wonderful. Again, it's easier to see in orthographic view. All of this here is just going to get sucked in to this subduction zone, and it'll draw this continent into this continent.
So we can see mountain building occurring here. Also, this ocean crust on this side is quite old. It's about 250 million years old. So subduction zone opens up here and it splits off this new ocean plate. So at 1740, we got another large Igneous province, much bigger than the previous large Igneous province. So it could cause a more substantial extinction. And where the last Igneous province likely caused a cold snap, this will cause like a more persistent period of cooling particularly because we got just this giant landmass here over the pole at this stage. And also this mountain range up here in the polar zone. We expect to see glaciation here as well. So at 1700, this continent here has fully smashed into our polar continent. And as a result of that collision, a piece of this continent broke off and kind of moved to the side here, forming kind of like an interesting continental shape. We got another rift happening here to break apart this section, sending it likely up this way. And we also have a new subduction zone opened here, which will encourage this continent to move closer to this continent. Because again, the whole point is we're, we're not just randomly moving stuff. We're trying to form, break apart and then reassemble supercontinents. And as this continent moves northwards, it's going to suck in this mid-ocean ridge. So we're going to end up turning this mountain range into a Rockies style mountain range with Laramide orogeny. And we're well on the way to our two northern continents really colliding. So at 1650, we got a new subduction zone opening here, again, to deal with old ocean crust in this ocean here. We also have a new oceanic plate forming at the triple junction of these three oceanic plates. Think of this as being like a Pacific analog. And our two northern continents have fully come together. It's a complicated collision that involves lots of island arcs and various plate boundaries being smushed together. So this is definitely going to be a Himalayan style orogeny going on. We're going to get some pretty rapid subduction of these mid-ocean ridges here. So again, we have another Rockies occurring up this direction. And then at 1600, we've basically reformed our supercontinent. We're back to having one giant landmass. Both collisions here, again, are fairly complex because, again, there's a bunch of island arcs wrapped up in the collision. So these would be kind of intermediate Ural to Himalayan style orogenies. Total land area of this supercontinent is about 28% that of the entire planet. So we've gained 2% over the course of the evolution thus far. We got a rift opening here, which is going to drag this section of the supercontinent just closer into the heart, compacting it a little bit. And we also have a rift opening here, which is going to drag these little bits up here. We got a large igneous province forming here. Again, intermediate size may or may not cause a big extinction, depending on our timeline and how we want to play it. And this chap is going to be a precursor to a future rifting event, though a very, very early precursor to it. And as is the case with most supercontinents, you got a whole bunch of land together, so the interior is going to be quite dry, especially given that we have lots and lots of coastal mountain ranges kind of closing off the interior of a good chunk of the continent. And the large Ignis province could exacerbate that dryness as well. So over the next 50 million years, between 600 and 1550, the supercontinent basically just kind of sits. This bit here begins to complete its collision over here. The little chunks here get closer to an impact to the north. And there's also a new rift that opened up that will send this chap on its way. What I think is just really lovely, these really long uh, subduction zones through the ocean just lead to these cool, long island arc chains. Really fun. Lots of new land being created to accrete, to increase the land area of our planet. Now, at this point, we should probably talk about the requirements I, I gave Whirlbling Pasta. The first one was that I wanted the world to have an Americas analog. That is, two bits of continental crust that were in contact at one point, broke apart, and then later reassembled, a la North and South America. This rift here is creating our South America analog. So just keep an eye on that as we move forward. At 1510, we got, I think, our biggest large igneous province thus far, so almost certainly something will happen there, Ori extinctions. 
it's going to be a precursor to fully rifting apart the supercontinent. And just like before, we'd expect the climate to warm here. Also, we got a bunch of like really nice shallow seas going on, which is kind of cool. And it's around about this time, possibly a little bit earlier, that um, I want the invasion of land to occur. So this is kind of a good condition for it to do so in and around 1510, give or take maybe 50 million years either side. The exact date I've yet to pinpoint. We will get to that internet, don't worry. So at 1500, this continent here has um, completed the first part of its collision. It's going to continue smashing into here, I think. And these little bits of island arcs here have begun to collide with our South America analog. We also have a new rift opening up. That's going to split our supercontinent into three chunks. This chunk here, this chunk here, and then this chunk here. And again, for these chaps, intermediate, this, these orogenies here, intermediate between Ural and Himalayan, I think. So at 1470, we got a subduction of mid-ocean ridge here, likely Laramide orogeny occurring here, but just a relatively brief one. At 1460, we got a, another large igneous province occurring in the southern portion here. Quite small, possibly won't trigger a substantial extinction, but it will cause rifting of this southern continent. Now, another one of the requirements I asked of World Building Pasta was to create an Australia analogue, and that is a section of continental crust that is and has been for a good deal of time isolated from the rest of the continents. And that is going to be this chap here. So we got South America here, we got Australia here, and spoilers, this section here is going to be North America. Our rift opens up, climate warming, splitting apart this southern continent. We'll get some more Laramide stuff happening up here as all of these mid-ocean ridges are getting subducted. And note that this Pacific analog that we've been growing is now going to be gobbled up here, here, etc. So at 1400 we get another quite large rift, again warming, which is going to send our North America analog over to meet South America. This continent here has finally completed its collision and again very complicated so we're going to end up with a Himalayan style orogeny going on there and it's about to get more complicated as this microcontinent is going to slam into here as well. And I believe that is the final rift of note in the simulation because we got all of the constituent parts that I wanted. Again, North America, South America, Australia. So the end times are upon us in terms of the simulation. 1380, we got a very large Ignis province. That one almost indisputably will trigger some sort of mass extinction and also just a general cooling of climate, particularly because a lot of our mid-ocean ridges are being subducted away. Lots of mountains are beginning to form, glaciers, etc. And we also got a bunch of aging crust going on at the moment as well, so sea levels will fall. So this could be an interesting little epoch in our planet. Microcontinent collides, giving even more complicated orogeny here. New subduction zones open to encourage South America here to just really slam into North America. And again, just note that this chap has been a big island continent for a long, long time, and it will continue to do so. It is like mega Australia, Australia on steroids. 1310 sees another random large igneous province, not associated with rifting at all. Very small, likely won't cause too much trouble. Now here we have another rift opening and that is a consequence of, again, subduction zones. Subduction zones cause everything. If we look at orthographic view, we see that we have a big old subduction zone along this continent here and that's putting pressure on this central continent. So a rift opens and then this chap is going to be sent this way. A little bit hard to see what's going on here, but there's going to be Laramide style orogeny along here just because of how quick this continent has been moving west. So it's rapidly subducting the oceanic crust beneath it. So we're going to end up with Rockies along this coast at this point. So at 1250, North America has slammed into South America, or rather, I guess it would be the other way around. South America was speeding towards North America. Something that quick is definitely going to result in Himalayan orogeny going on here, for sure. Note, we also have a trapped 
sort of section of ocean crust here. We'll talk about that at the end. This is a major collision. It's also major collisioning happening more or less in the polar zone. So again, we'd expect climate to cool here a little bit. After a brief warming period post this rift occurred a couple of uh, time steps ago. Now, incidentally, I didn't ask for this, but we've kind of got a micro Australia going on here as well. It's been separated from other land masses for a while, although not half as long as this chap here. So we kind of got like two Australias. And I should have mentioned earlier, but worth noting that our Americas analog here is far more like latitudinal than the Americas is. Because like the Americas on Earth runs like more or less north to south, whereas our Americas is running, at least this upper chunk here, is running like Eurasia, more or less west to east, which if you're a believer in guns, germs, and steel can lead to just a whole bunch of fun stuff happening there. We got more Laramide stuff about to happen here as this mid-ocean ridge is going to get sucked into this chap here. We got another small-ish large Ignis province. Again, may or may not cause a substantial extinction. We can just play it by ear. And then we proceed into the final time step and into our modern world. And you can kind of see how the next supercontinent is going to form. Like this chap is going to collide with this. It's going to collide with this. This whole conglomeration might head north and meet up at the back end of this chap, etc. So you can kind of see a future to the world as well, which is just dope. Here we have the break off of what is like Japan style analogs. We got a back arc basin here. See previous videos that I made in this series. And they're sort of trapped little a semi trapped little ocean going on here. We also have a last minute rift here, which is really great that Whirlbling Pasta did that because recall that the sort of like air quotes natural state of the world, given its setup is to be quite cold. And um, I wanted it to be more like modern day earth. So it's good that we have this kind of rifting event going on that we can just like hand wave the temperature up to uh, modern earth temperatures, give or take. So that's really cool. It is so young, this rifting event, that we will likely not actually see this uh, continent rift apart. It will likely just be like the Rift Valley in uh, Africa, which is pretty cool. And we'll talk about that in a second once we do a breakdown of uh, what are the interesting things for each of the continents. Now, hotspots. I haven't talked about hotspots. We got a, a random assortment of hotspots, some occurring in the middle of plates, some occurring in and around mid-ocean ridges. But the interesting one would be over here. Let me switch to orthographic. Where are you, my friend? Here we go. We have this collection of hotspots meeting up with this mid-ocean ridge. So therefore, we can confidently place an Iceland analog over here, which is pretty cool. So in terms of modern geography, this northern continent here, the Himalayan orogeny that occurred in the center here will likely be eroded away to a degree. It'll still be a prominent mountain range, but not like, you're not gonna get a bunch of Everests here. And you can see that with the coloration. We'll also end up having nice fjording going on all along here. This trapped ocean, it's been trapped for a long time, so likely it'll become filled in with sediment to a degree. But it is so large that like we could fill most of it in and still end up with a trapped inland sea that's like 1.5 to maybe two, three times the size of the Caspian Sea. So we can get a real giant inland sea up here, which is cool. And also this could be an endoreic basin. Uh, and for those who don't know, that's a... Um, basin where water can drain into it, but it can't flow out of it. And you can see that because it's encased in kind of mountains or X mountains. And the only way for water to leave would be through evaporation. So it's pretty dope. And I think it's a pretty cool branding feature of this northern continent. What else with this guy? Oh yeah, these islands here, these are hella old. They're like 400 million years old. So we'll get like um, Indonesia style formations here, possibly fusing with the mainland. But in any case, like big island arcs, like big, big island arcs. So that's that's really fun. The Australia content. So like I said, we'd likely end up with a um, uplift plateau here a la the Rift Valley in Africa. This partially enclosed sea, again, we could fill in some of it as well with sediment. Again, depending on where we are in terms of land coverage percentage. For our microcontinent here, uh, again, this trapped inland sea thing will almost definitely be filled in with like low-lying sedimentary plains, possibly a nice bay might occur here, but I wouldn't expect it to 
really look like this in the modern world. And again, we have some old island arcs here that we need to flesh out and make bigger. I don't think they'd be quite Indonesia style like this, but still fairly substantial. And finally, our southern continent. Squarely parked on the pole, so we'd expect some glaciation. We may need to hand wave some of the temperatures here because it's not screaming hothouse world at me um, to get us up to that 15 degrees, So, but it's fine. We don't need to worry about it. Worst case scenario, we'll just do climate zones indicative of uh, what they were during the last glacial maximum, but we'll see down the road. In any case, southern continent, ice caps, glaciation over these mountain ranges for sure, etc. There's a teeny little bit of an ocean left here, little trapped ocean. That is so small that I think that's just going to be totally filled in with sediment. Oh, and the other thing to note here, in both our America's analog and in this southern continent, um, there are loads of chunks here that are encased in mountains, say particularly this one here, again can lead to an extremely dry interior. So it might be worth leveraging the power of some of these failed rifts and just breaking apart the mountain ranges and reshaping the coastline a bit to allow a bit of water to get in here and... Um, moisten things up a bit again that would be that would be the case for northern continent and in the southern continent in orthographic view we can see that a little bit better so we have like for example here we're encased in mountains so this would be extremely dry if we don't want that again we can break open some of these mountain chains all right i think that's everything i think that's everything i guess the last thing to do just for your viewing pleasure, if you so desire, I might just finish the video playing through the simulation with just the plates turned on. So you could see the evolution of the actual plates themselves. And then we should also play a, a simulation through with ocean crust. I'll do that one first because this takes a little bit of explaining. If I turn on the ocean, uh, I don't want spoilers. Hold on, let's not do spoilers. Let's just move it back here. We'll turn on some ocean crust. You'll see here, this looks really wonky. And um, the way World Building Pasta has done this, um, is to have this extant ocean crust layer. So it will place in any and all ocean crust that makes it to the modern world. Everything else is just not going to be included. So it's going to look really weird at the start, but then it'll all come together at the end. So uh, let's do that. Let's first go for one full sim uh, showing what happens to the ocean crust. So there we go, a psychedelic map of what the oceans are doing. Red being the youngest sections of ocean crust, and I think pink here being the absolute oldest. Okay, and the final animation before we go today is going to be just a plates animation. Let's see how our plates evolved over time.
All right, and that's how the plates evolved. Uh, if my counting is correct, that's 10 kind of major plates that exist in the world. Okay, so that is that. Next time we talk, we're going to be working on these island arcs here and just editing the uh, terrain, getting it closer to its final uh, modern state. And then we can start to look at climate maps and all that good stuff. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support the show. Links in the description. And again, a massive, massive thanks to World Building Pasta. This is some just some seriously awesome work. I am privileged to be able to collaborate and work with uh, such skilled people. So until next time, Edgar out.